Now, starting this bulletin with the updates coming in from Israel, which is now fighting a multi-front war days after a massive air, ground and sea onslaught from Gaza's Hamas regime caught the Jewish state off guard. Over a thousand Israelis have been killed in the Hamas attack so far. On the other hand, 900 have been reported killed in Gaza, which has come under intense bombardment from Israel's retaliatory strikes. Israel has also reported finding bodies of some 1,500 Hamas militants who infiltrated the Israeli territory on the 7th of October. Now in the latest, the United States has conceded to intelligence failure over the surprise attack on Israel. White House National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan says the U.S. intelligence did not see anything that suggested an attack of this type was going to unfold. On Thursday, the president will travel. To As we speak, Israel is continuously pounding what it claims to be Hamas hideouts in the densely populated Gaza Strip. Over 2,300 such airstrikes have been carried out so far in which Israel claims killing top Hamas commanders. Now, Hamas has also confirmed the death of some of its top commanders in Israeli attacks, but the militant group has nonetheless threatened to begin executing hostages if Israel continues to strike civilian households without prior warning. Now, Hamas is holding up to 150 hostages, and these include Israeli and foreign nationals. Now, amid the relentless Israeli bombardment on Gaza, Hamas carried out fresh rocket attacks on southern Israel. Israeli security forces of residents in Ashkelon to head asked uh, Ashkelon to head to safe rooms after reports of more militants crossing from Gaza following the rocket fire. Civilians in Gaza, on the other hand, are scrambling to flee the narrow strip of land, which has now been blockaded completely by Israel. And Egypt, on its part, is moving to contain the mass exodus of Gazans into its soil. Now, Egypt's military had taken up new positions close to the border between Egypt and Gaza and was running patrols to monitor the area. Israeli bombardments have already halted crossings at the only exit point from the Palestinian enclave. Israeli security forces ordered a total siege of Gaza late on, on Monday, cutting of essential supplies like food, water and electricity for thousands. The United Nations has called the siege of Gaza a violation of international law. European nations have also advised Israel against the same. Now, Israel has called up 300,000 reservists and mass tanks and other heavy armor both near Gaza and on the northern border with Lebanon and Syria as it endures attacks from multiple fronts. After three days of clashes with militants on the northern border with Lebanon, Israel reported munitions fired from Syria in the Golan Heights area, which, it, which its forces countered with retaliatory fire. Amid the fresh attacks and counterattacks, the Israeli forces have confirmed the arrival of the first tranche of advanced ammunition from the United States. Now, the U.S. aid arrived in Israel as President Joe Biden called the attacks by Hamas an act of sheer evil. U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken is also set to visit Israel on Thursday to meet with senior Israeli leaders in a show of solidarity and support with Israel. At least 14 U.S. citizens have also been killed so far in Israel, with an unspecified number of Americans missing or being held hostage. Joining us on the broadcast now, we have with us Professor James A. Russell from the Department of National Security Affairs at the NPS, live from Monterey, California. He is an expert on U.S. foreign policy in the Middle East and has taught courses on military innovation and national security strategy. Sir, thank you so much for joining us on the show. My pleasure. Uh, now, Professor, in what way do you reckon this, will, this war will change the complexion of West Asia, if at all? Uh, it's not clear that this is that the war is going to have this kind of dramatic strategic effect, as you suggest. Um, uh, we have to kind of remember that that these uh, interactions, strategic interactions between these two particular adversaries, mm -hmm. uh, has been going on for what the last quarter odd century, in which there are periodic bloodlettings, um, to to put it bluntly. Um, in which both sides uh, haul after each other, uh, both sides commit atrocities. Um, and this kind of situation, um, I mean, we talk, for example, one of the interesting uh, sort of commentaries that we see these days is about the intelligence surprise. Mm -hmm. And 
if one looks back at the pattern of these these attacks and counterattacks by Israel and Gaza, it's about every seven years. Um, and we were coming up on the seven year mark between the last attack. And so I can understand tactically how the Israelis may have been surprised by this. But strategically, I don't see this as a big surprise at all, which is to say that uh, uh, they're keeping you, you can't keep hundreds of thousands of people in what is effectively a maximum security prison mm -hmm. um, in, in Gaza uh, under a continuous blockade and expect them not to object. Uh, and this is what's happened. And it's been horrific, of course, as we've seen. Uh, and President Biden, I think, you know, accurately characterized the violence that has occurred as simply awful, brutal. Um, but the point is uh, that I, I don't see this as a kind of a uh, this this conflict is having these these follow on strategic effects, as you suggest, despite the exchange of gunfire, uh, mm -hmm. as you as you mm -hmm. mentioned in your report on the northern border. This would imply that you could potentially have Iranian slash Hezbollah involvement. And I, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, we all have to hope that doesn't happen. But but I don't I don't see this spinning into a wider regional conflict. Uh, Professor, now Israel intends to eliminate Hamas once and for all. What sort of a strategy would you reckon they have in place for the same? How will they discern between Hamas militants from innocent civilians in such an offensive? I don't see how they can do it. I, I don't. In other words, there's no military solution uh, mm -hmm. to the problem that Israel is facing with the Palestinians. And by which I mean, of course, I mean those Palestinians on the West Bank. I mean the Palestinians in Gaza. There's no military solution to this. You cannot bomb national political aspirations and the desire for human rights out of existence. I don't care what overwhelming force you use. Uh, Israel has shown the propensity to use overwhelming force in the past to tamp down the violence and the objections to the uh, illegal occupation by the Israelis over the years. This has not solved the problem. The military operations in Gaza, which I'm sure are going to unfold over the next week or so, uh, this is not going to eliminate the Palestinian aspirations for self-determination and basic human rights. <laughs> that doesn't go away. You can't bomb it out of existence. Professor, you know, I just need to pick your brain on this one. Now, Biden says the U.S. stands with Israel. Turkish president, though, has already sent out a statement from his side. He's criticized the United States for moving military assets closer to Israel. Now, yeah. Anthony Blinken is already, already also on his way to Israel to meet uh, the Israeli leadership. Now, mm -hmm. Turkey says that you know, with U.S. getting involved, it will only create serious massacres in Gaza. Hezbollah, on the other hand, has also issued a warning from its side. Now, the first plane carrying U.S. arms has already reached Israel. I want to take, you know, your thoughts on this. Do you feel U.S. involvement here will make matters better or do you think it will make matters worse? Well, you have to take a step back from this. I mean, we haven't seen this kind of uh, crisis and, and, and crisis sort of management really since the 73 war. Uh, when uh, President Nixon uh, authorizes the resupply of the Israelis in the 73 war and President uh, and, and, and Henry Kissinger at the time puts uh, the, the sort of nuclear forces on alert in response to steps the Russians are making. Um, and it's, you know, it's a very uh, it was a very dangerous uh, situation. If you, if you want to talk about a situation that had the potential for catastrophic escalation, mm -hmm. it was certainly in the 73 war. Now, uh, today. Uh, I, I would say that, of course, geopolitical strategic circumstances are different. Mm -hmm. But the fact remains is that from the American perspective, that this is America's closest ally, perhaps in the world. Uh, uh, there is there can be no question about this, that the, whenever the Israeli prime minister wants to come to the United States, he speaks to the joint session of Congress. He goes to the White House. I mean, in other words, uh, the United States has a special relationship with Israel mm -hmm. uh, and successive Republican and Democratic administrations have given these ironclad assurances before. And so the movement of these forces, for example, the movement of the Ford, yes. the America's newest aircraft carrier into the eastern Mediterranean and some guided missile cruisers uh, along with it, are, are simply an attempt to to control potential escalation by outside parties. 
right? Again, this is, again, re represents a return to an era we all thought had kind of gone or vanished from, from sort of international events. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I think Erdogan, uh, Prime Minister Erdogan, of course, is, you know, as any regional leader, is right to be concerned about this. Mm -hmm. But from the American perspective, this is America's main regional partner. Mm -hmm. uh, we have very deep and strong ties. Mm -hmm. And um, the U.S. will Israel be there for them, is what you're saying. And, and the U.S. That's there can be no question about this mm -hmm. for any American president in today's mm -hmm. political environment that it, he has to sort of state this, and he has stated it, and and is operationalizing it with shipments of munitions, with forces mm -hmm. moving into the region. So uh, that that's kind of a, uh, it's a sign of our commitment to to. Uh, to Israel's security. U.S. remains committed to Israel. Uh, Professor, I also want to take your thoughts on this one. And this is a question which has baffled everyone since Saturday. What led to the intelligence yeah. failure for both Israel and the U.S.? How did they not see this coming? Yeah, so, so uh, of course, I'm not privy to any of this information. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, I, I have no idea how, for example, the respective intelligence agencies, typically you, you would look at something called IMW, which goes, which is, stands for indications and warning. Mm -hmm. So there's a, there's, you know, a, a, a group of people, I, I suppose, that look for indications and warning that, that some kind of attack is brewing. Um, but again, I, I get back to this, you know, kind of uh, issue of tactical versus sort of strategic surprise. The, 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 the Gaza's, uh, uh, the, the Hamas military operations should not come as a strategic surprise given the political mm -hmm. and strategic circumstance that they exist uh, uh, in Gaza. Uh, tactical surprise, okay, I, I understand that. that, they, that and, and I would also hasten to add that Israel is manning a, uh, a, a, a border wall, right? A wall, right? Around the Gaza Strip. They've got mm -hmm. uh, these uh, machine gun, remote, uh, remotely controlled machine guns, and they've got all, these, all this concrete which has been poured uh, to try to operationalize the the, the land based side of the uh, uh, the uh, um, isolation of, of Gaza, and and of course the, the reality of it all of, of that is is that it leads to fatigue on the part of the occupying forces. Mm -hmm. You know, every day they're having to show up in these in these uh, places, and and of course. Uh, they have to man them. They have to, you know, personnel have to they move can't in and out. Even a moment of laxness, they they can't afford yeah, to do that. Can't, yeah, no, this is exactly you. You've accurately characterized it, and it's difficult for for any forces in a, such a continuously hostile environment to maintain such a hyper state of readiness. In fact, I would argue it's it's nearly impossible. Mm -hmm. um, and and so the the uh, there's been some other sort of speculation about this in the press so that you're saying it's you know, impossible to keep a constant vigil there, and it was they did yeah. just take them by surprise. They can't always yeah, be there it, 24 it's, hours. It, exactly, it's impossible mm -hmm. to be constantly vigilant, and at the same time, again, getting to this idea of strategic surprise. That uh, again, from my perspective, and looking up the region, you know, over the last what 25, 30, 40 years. The only surprise to me, uh, 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 per se, was th this hadn't happened sooner, <laughs> right? So this was the, bound the, to happen as and when, and uh, you know, from all your experience, I, I, that's I, what you I, feel that I, it, yeah. it was bound to interaction, happen. Interactions like this are bound to happen when the political circumstances that give rise to the grievance are not addressed. And, and if you're in the Palestinian camp and you've looked, for example, at the attempts to by the United States to help engineer the normalization of relationships between uh, Saudi Arabia and Israel, for example, with really no specific mention of the plight of the Palestinians or independent statehood and what their status is going to be. I mean, you, you, you quickly can understand, again, the frustration that they are once more being left behind by not only Israel and the United States, but the regional states as well. So, Sorry, and, and Israel Arabia. can't bombard, you know, the right for human rights, basically the, oh. the need for human rights out and uh, definitely an attack like this was always expected. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Professor, for joining us My and pleasure. sharing all your insights from your, uh, you know, your great knowledge you have on the subject. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.